I was really excited when they said it was an equal pay review. And I was like, this is fantastic. The world's moving forward. We're being recognized. Actually, women are gonna get paid the same as men. I was like, this is fantastic. So when it was all coming about, I was like, brilliant. Then when I found out it's got 25% cut, I was like, hang on a minute. So that's been my name, Darby. We're on the same pay grade as us when we went through the equal pay review. They got a £2,000 increase in their wages while we had a dip of 25%. Where's the fairness in that? Predominantly school support staff, many teaching assistants, but also midday supervisors, admin workers. The first thing we had to tell our members in September 2015 was in actual fact they had gained, they'd, they'd actually gone up one grade in the equal pay review, they'd gone from a grade four to a grade five. But what the council did at the same time was they squashed the pay line downwards so that each grade was worth less. That was their choice, they didn't legally have to do that. It's one step back, Council says we all got a full-time wage for a part-time job. We didn't. Our wages were divided pro rata over the year. We then went on to introduce a 37-hour week as a full-time equivalent working week within schools. Now, now bearing in mind teachers are still on a 32 and a half hour week as a full-time equivalent. That meant that schools didn't migrate people over onto the 37-hour week, kept them on 32 and a half hours and made them part-time and they had their pay reduced retrospectively. To work the 37 hours the same as the council, every council worker, you would um, expect to do an extra four hours a week. Well, you did more. You wouldn't leave a group in a group of um, after school activity children say, well, my hours are up now, I've got to go. And, you know, I've done weekends, residentials, after school clubs, before school clubs. We can't, like the council workers, do flexi hours. So if we worked an extra two hours a week, I can't take that back. Ever. Labour nationally are there for the working families, the working people, support trade unions, and it's a Labour run council that had agreed to slash our pay by 25% to change our terms and conditions. I've been to university, done a degree, numerous training courses to keep up to date with what's going on. We have to keep up with the curriculum, we have to know the safeguarding. We do just as much as the teachers a lot of the time. Well, that includes marking, evaluating the children's work, planning for lessons that we actually uh, um, teach um, and often it's to do with evaluating the children, target setting because we all have our own groups that we teach literacy to uh, and we plan for those ourselves. The teachers don't plan and we do. Um, and we've had more and more of <laughs> teachers' jobs being foisted onto us for no uh, remuneration uh, and our stress levels have gone up. I think people, when they realised what that initial loss out of their pay was going to be, it was massive. It was massive for people, so there was anger. That's really when we started to club together overnight. Closed Facebook group for school support staff went from half a dozen members to like 600 over a weekend. And that Facebook group became a lifeline really to a lot of TAs that were really struggling. I was able to talk to each other, support one another. And you people feeling low, we were there. And the, the Facebook thing really was the, the catalyst for what we did. <laughs> first mass demonstration outside the council house was on the 7th of October 2015. We got a lot of press coverage, TV, radio, local newspapers. There was over 500 members with support from other local unions as well. Our Labour leader, Councillor Bamwait, did address the crowd. He was just extremely patronising. He told us he was on our side, he told us to calm down. It didn't go down well. We had another demonstration on the 25th of November 2015. It was loud. It was very loud. During that demonstration, one of our school stewards, Julia Redfern, presented a petition of over 5,000 signatures. The councillors just noted it, but no further action was taken. To us, it felt like it had just been swept under the carpet. The imposition date was supposed to be the 1st of January, and we did get that pushed back because of our resistance to the 1st of June. No! In January, the Unison Schools team attended the dismissal and consultations in every school. It included some walkouts where staff just 
got up and left because they weren't happy with what they were being told. In my own dismissal and re-engage meeting that I had, I proved I would be better off on benefits. They didn't even bat an eyelid. We told our branch what we wanted and we got the back in every time. Every time. It has very, very much been member-led. We had work to rule weeks. We had two-hour walkouts over the lunch period. Most of the teaching assistants now um, have become midday supervisors because the schools haven't got it in the budgets to pay for them. So that two-hour slot, we did that for two weeks. The lunchtime workouts were good fun. Unison arranged for us to meet in different parks across the city and we'd all have lunch together, whether it be chippy cobs brought from unison or buffets or we just take a picnic there's always feeding involved it brings people together and then we did a couple of mornings and then we did afternoon we tried to vary it so the council wouldn't know and the schools wouldn't know but it did all come in on the 1st of june and we didn't go away we were balloted school support staff overwhelmingly voted to take action and our first day of action was the 16th of June 2016. It was a day of full strike action with pickets at various schools across the city and from that we led on to a day at the council house and we made a lot of noise. People would drive past, beeping the horns, people would stop and talk to us. When you're walking down to protest to get your job you feel low and then you see people and they bring you back up again. It was It's amazing what we've done together. When you are just a small group of strikers from a school, two, three, strike days were a bit of a safety net. You were with everybody that was suffering the same, feeling scared, struggling the same, thinking the same. When I arrived here today, I've been given a number of leaflets and booklets, as I often am, and I really appreciate that. The first one is from Unison members working in the schools. <laughs> Chris has made the point on that. I tell you this, I absolutely value the role of the entire team in a school, including the teaching assistants and the support staff. I come from a background of being a full-time organiser in the National Union of Public Employees, organising all of those members of the union who do all the other jobs in school. You can't have a good school without good teachers. Likewise, you can't have a good school without good cleaners, good teaching assistants, good catering workers, and all the other grades. And that surely is a message and a lesson that we can give to all our youngsters. He gave us a support. He promised to contact Ranjit Bamway over at the council. He was just very, very supportive. And in the press, it was reported that Ranjit didn't want Jeremy Corbyn interfering in local council business. In September, we upped the ante in a way because they wouldn't talk to us. So we went for four days after that and like two days, three days here, two days here. And I won't be pushed around, but I won't be a problem. When people talk about the miners strike it's quite emotional for me because my dad was a miner. What happened to the miners strike was awful, it went on for a very, very, very long time. So when I heard the comment, I was furious, absolutely furious. Many places in the world you can go and demonstrate outside your power so that was quite an empowering moment for all of us it was a fantastic day dave prentice was there he has offered fantastic support from the beginning angela rayner she was fantastic so i call upon the council to do what's right to do what's moral and to pay you a decent pay that you can go out and look after your children and raise your families on Solidarity, you have our support. I ain't is one step backward, but two step forward. <laughs> Labour Party conference. Boy, did it rain. But again, amazing. We were wet. We were cold. We handed out leaflets to everybody that walked in, that walked out. And again, we got a lot of support. By this time as well, the general public had started to turn their back on Ranjit Bamwait. 
there was a lot happening within the city. Things were closing. Activities that have run in the city for years were stopping. We targeted local wards and we went door knocking. We would collect hundreds of signatures to send off to the respective councillor from that area. There was a lot of support. It's a disgrace that a Labour council should be cutting the pay of low-paid workers, women workers, who contribute so much to our school. And our union, Unison, will be there with you all of the way through. We take our message from you. And if they do not talk, if they do not listen, we will escalate. We will take political action, we will take legal action, and we will continue with the support that we're giving for your strike. And at the end of the day, we will win, because we've got life on our side. You should never have been treated in this way. It's absolutely immoral, and this council will pay the price. And let's say, come round the negotiating table, and they talk, and they can sort out the mess that they've created. Personally, I've lost £4,000 a year, which is £320 a month. We have a couple of ladies in our school who've lost over £5,000 a year. I've lost £6,500. I've been given extra hours. I now work 41 hours a week for considerably less than I was on this time last year. When we want to go out and do things as a family, um, Whereas before I would pay for everything, my daughter who's 17, and it's not her job to do it, she's, she's helping me a lot and I'm finding myself in a position now where I'm going to have to go out and look for a job. I know people have um, lost their houses, sold houses, it's, it's really heartbreaking. <laughs> speak to any of the teacher assistants and a lot of them will tell you that they worried about children in their class, the groups that they worked with, the interventions they were missing out on, the guilt that a lot of us have openly talked about. It's hard, it's hard knowing that that child might not get to where they should do at the end of the school year. I'm Helen McLaughlin and I'm here to support my daughter who really just want to get back into school and without the TAs at school we can't do anything so we're here to support the TAs to get our children back at school. Our shared to make Derby a safe, strong and ambitious city, a better place to live, work and visit. We'll have a few I'll suspend this meeting if this carries on. We deserve to be listened to. We haven't for the last three months. We deserve to be listened to, and we're not being listened to. Thank you.
People had signed up to a slot, 50 minutes. People just couldn't stay away. People didn't want to just stick to their own slot. It was fantastic, even in the middle of the night. The council expected the public to be against us, they weren't. They were very supportive. I think we would put five stone on everybody because every time somebody walked past, they gave us food. They were so supportive. We regularly took ourselves over for lunch or coffee and cake or tea and biscuits over into the cafe at the council house. It meant that the councillors couldn't have anywhere lunch anywhere. that our members have been taken, the Labour group have helped us get a deal and our reps have agreed to suspend action while we ballot all of our members on it. As of the 1st of September, they will go back onto a 52-week contract. They will be paid for 52 weeks of the year for the work that they do. They will no longer... Negotiations are still going off till end of July. Again, saying saying actually no, we don't want that. We want this. If you don't stand up and say no, nothing's ever going to get done. Instead of moaning about it, you need to get together and change it. And that's what everybody's got to start doing. And I won't be pushed around.